first learning check. So answer these four questions. Do this as much as you can without referring back to the terms and answers in your notes or book. I know there's a lot of terms related to joints. So I'm gonna pop up for you um, some of the, the names for each of these. If you wanna to try to do them first without this, please pause and do that now. Otherwise, here they are. I'm very light here, so you're still not tempted to just copy them exactly. Um, but these are hints for you to name what the names are for each of these. You still need to describe or state the functional classification for, for each of these names I've given you. Okay, now let's talk about synovial joints. So synovial joints are all diarthroses, right? And that means that they are freely mobile, very movable. So we're gonna go over the structures that make up a synovial joint, why it's called that. In short, because it's more complex than just fibers or cartilage holding things together. And then the types of synovial joints, which are start, going to start to get at the movements they allow us to do. So starting with anatomy, I think it's going to advance again. So those are some of the things you can do with your synovial joints. Starting with anatomy, now, um, there are two bones here that are articulated, right? So here's a bone and a bone, and this is going to be a generic synovial joint. So just the components that are present in first all of them. Then we've got some structures that are present in some. In future videos, we'll go through applying these two specific joints. So like, what does the knee look like? Um, this though, in this image is going to be structures that are in all synovial joints. And actually what then define it as a synovial joint is going to be this complex structure here. So first there is um, an articular capsule. This is also called a joint capsule. Now that can make some sense because an articulation is a joint. So those are the same things. Um, this is a fibrous coating around the joint. Um, the articular capsule is made up of this fibrous outer layer, as well as importantly, the inner layer here, which is pink, is the synovial membrane. This is the inner layer of the articular capsule. And the synovial membrane is why it's called a synovial joint. Um, in addition to the substance that the synovial membrane secretes, there are cells along this membrane that secrete synovial fluid. So synovial fluid is going to be in this space in here. And the space is called a joint cavity. So in the joint cavity, a cavity is a space, right? In this case, that space is enclosed by the articular capsule um, and by the, the ends of the bones as well. It's a particular cartilage, actually. Um, we can just go ahead and name that, that now as well. You remember that articular cartilage is on the ends of bones where they articulate with other bones. And what kind of cartilage is articular cartilage? Not a formal learning check, but check your learning by remembering that it's hyaline cartilage. That's going to be both of those, right? All that blue. I think that's it. That's basically the main definition of a synovial joint is this articular capsule made up of fibrous a fibrous membrane and a synovial membrane. The synovial being particularly important to remember because it synthesizes the synovial fluid, which is a lubricating fluid inside the joint cavity. Um, 
which is the space um, that is enclosed by that joint capsule, particular capsule um, around this joint. We're going to see that in order for these joints to move, we're gonna have to have some other structures, right? So um, that's the basics, let me just see. So we're going to have this whole set of structures here um, supported by tendons, which connect bone to muscle. That's how the joints are gonna allow for movement as well as ligaments, which are gonna connect bone to bone to support this joint um, and keep it, give it stability so that it can move without just like ripping apart all the time. One more thing before I go on to some of those more specific structures, um, the synovial fluid. So it's, I mentioned lubrication. Um, it is like a viscous lubricating fluid um, that by being in this joint cavity, is going to help absorb shock, um, prevent too much friction from occurring, and also be involved in nutrient distribution to the local tissue, such as articular cartilage. So pretty important stuff. Okay, so then there are some accessory structures of these synovial joints. These are present in, in most, but in variable, um, variable amounts. <laughs> so this is the knee joint, right? So I will go ahead and kind of label some specific structures, um, patella, femur, and tibia. Then we've got the same structures we saw in the previous video. So see if you can find those yourself. I'm gonna do those in a different color um, since these three bones are not really the focus right now. We've got the joint capsule. What's this black part in there? The joint cavity. This is also called articular capsule. Articular cartilage. And then of course, you know that joint capsule is made up of a fibrous portion as well as the synovial pink part right there. Then we've got some structures that I have not mentioned yet, um, or if I did, it was briefly. Let me go blue, that's um, gonna show up. So I'll label the accessory structures in blue. There is some little things right here. These are bursa. Bursa are little pouches of synovial fluid. That's not how you spell pouches. Pouches of synovial fluid, they are going to um, reduce friction and help absorb shock. So they are typically between either, let's see, tendon and bone. We have an example of that. Um, this is actually a ligament. Or they can be between. Um, bone and skin, or they can be between ligaments and bone. They're always next to bone and preventing friction with a bone with something. So bone and some other structure. We'll see some examples um, as we go. So like this would be a subcutaneous bursa. You've probably heard of bursitis, which is when these get inflamed and irritated. So sometimes they can cause problems, even though they're supposed to, supposed to be helping. Um, that's often from repetitive stresses that the, that bursitis would occur. Okay, then we've got some fat pads. Also can be an important part of joints, um, protection, physical protection and, and packing, keeping things structurally intact. Then we've got, um, special articular discs, this in the knee, and, and they often are called a meniscus. So a meniscus is um, a type of articular disc. Did I even spell that right? No, I'm missing an S, meniscus. Yeah, 
Um, this is our, a type of articular disc. They are kind of disc shaped that are uniting bones, helping to either like join them physically together, or in the case of the knee, this is more about shock absorption. Um, they are actually fibrocartilage pads. In this case, for the knee, this is going to be shock absorption, primarily. OK, I mentioned ligaments, um, both I think I gave a formal definition as well as I mentioned it here. So a ligament connects bone to bone. I can actually do another color here. We'll do ligaments in, what do I not have? Ligaments will be purple. We've got some accessory structures that are that are going to be purple. Here's a ligament connecting the patella down to the um, tibia. You will see this sometimes called a tendon because it kind of this is this is a tendon. This is the patellar tendon because it's connecting bone to muscle. This remember the patella is kind of embedded in tendon. That's the definition of a sesamoid bone which the patella is. So you'll see this ligament called a tendon because it's almost continuous with, with this tendon. So when you go to the doctor and they hit your patellar ligament, that's this, you'll see that called patellar tendon. So not the best example of defining a ligament for you here first. So let's find another ligament. Here in the middle, this is also a ligament. So these are the um, cruciate ligaments. So there's the anterior and posterior cruciate ligaments, ACL, PCL. Um, these are these are them in there. We'll see better pictures of them when we look at the knee. The point is there are ligaments around synovial joints, either inside or outside of the capsule itself, that are connecting bone to bone and providing stability for the joint while it moves. That's the point. Um, tendons are also associated with joints because muscles are associated with synovial joints, right? So tendons are connecting muscle to bone. And that is how our bones are going to move, going to be super important when we start talking about um, movements of body movements, and then also skeletal muscle attachment points. Those are related to each other, right? Where a muscle attaches is going to determine how a, um, a joint and therefore like a bone, like your leg can move. All right, I think I got all of the extra structures here. Again, we'll see them in context with several joints. Types of synovial joints. This is now based in their movement. But I wanted to do it with this first introductory video, just so you um, get in your head that these this is basics classification, right? Six types. Um, and so let me go back to black. And this is based on how these joints can move in terms of how many types of movement. Um, if you think about what I'm going to be talking about, like axes. So you've got something that moves around an axis. So here is one axis. If something can move relative to this axis, like around it, for example, that's monoaxial. It can move one direction. If that same joint also has a second axis, right? This is a different axis, a different plane. Um, this is another axis. Um, that can be moved around. <laughs> so we're, this is how we're going to define joints. Let, let's see this in action. So the, uh, sorry, let me just, let's start with one that can only move in one axis. Let's start with number one, a um, hinge joint. This is like a door hinge. Think about a door hinge. It only moves in one direction. That's called uniaxial. It only can move around one 
thing, the door, for example, that, that axis. You can't move any other in any other planes. So examples of this would be um, humerus and ulna, that's your elbow um, and your knee. Okay. Then there are joints that can move in lots of axes. So let's actually go over here. Doesn't matter which order we do these in, right? Um, this is a multi-axial joint. So your shoulder and your hip can move around many different planes. Here's one, here's another, um, here's another. So, so this one, we'll look at some of these planes a little bit. Um, so multi-axial, and that is also pretty intuitive, right? Like ball and socket, it's just super mobile, all multiple axes. Okay. Then we're gonna have a couple that are, um, let's go a couple more that are, one more that's uniaxial. So pivot, here's my pivot joint. This is another uniaxial joint. It is going to be able to pivot. So, like this. The two things kind of rotating, though, but in one plane. That rotation is different than the rotation your shoulder can do, the ball and socket that's in multiple planes. This is one plane. So, um, your atlas and axis, so the top, the C1 and C2 of your, of your neck. Um, there's also one in your arm that allows you to rotate this way. So that is a uniaxial. Um, I didn't actually write the, the name of that one here, did I? This is pivot. And this one is ball and socket. Okay. We've got three left. Let's do our biaxial. So these are ones that can move in two different planes. Um, let's do saddle first because I think that was a little more intuitive. So saddle joint, it's called that because it's like a rider on a saddle. Um, this is biaxial, so it can move in two different planes, not quite as intuitive. You think about your thumb, it almost seems like it can rotate, um, but it like, it, it kind of can't, <laughs> but it can't, it's not a ball and socket joint. Um, and looking at that picture there, like use that and then think about your thumbs. It can move in two different planes, this one and this one. So that's an example of a biaxial, just the very base of the thumb. Then you've got another type of biaxial joint, which are the condylar joints. This is also biaxial. This is kind of the rest of your fingers. Um, well, and actually toes as well. Um, so we are talking about the base of the finger. Um, that's actually where this is right here. So this would actually be like your hand. And here's your fingers because these bones down here are actually in your hand. So this, that blue right there is the base joint right here. Um, so these also, can you, can you figure out what two planes we have? We have this one, flexing and extending your finger, curling your fingers. And we also have this way. That's the second plane. So that's the condylar joint. Um, the rest of these little finger joints are hinge joints, right? So these ones can't actually move your fingers side to side like you can your whole your whole finger together. I don't know, maybe someone can, but I can't like move that very much. <laughs> it's not supposed to move at those other joints. Okay. Then lastly, we've got gliding or plane joints. That's the same thing here um, because it's on a plane. It glides on a plane. It's, it's, it glides on a single plane. Um, you will see these actually classified as different things. Um, you'll see them classified as, I think your book talks about them as multi-axial. 
but often limited in what they can actually do. Therefore, you'll also see them called biaxial some places. Um, and you'll also see them called like non-axial because they're gliding across a single thing. 